Speaking of Telesto, it re-enabled itself again. <laughs> so now Bungie's gonna, but Bungie just gives up. They're like, we're just gonna nerf it so that nobody uses it. <laughs> Oh, but that, will, that won't be the will, case. I was gonna say, will it will it really matter? Because they don't use it for its damage; they use it for its utilities. So, <laughs> unless by nerf you mean take away Telesto bolts, I'm not sure that's to gonna be honest, suffice. I was saying this to Parody and Blue Screen earlier. I don't understand why Telesto was brought into Destiny Two. They knew there was issues in Destiny One where it kept breaking Destiny One, and they stopped a couple of exotics for coming over to Destiny Two because of that fact yet they still let the Telesto sneak in. Maybe Telesto was baked into the code and they couldn't get rid of it. <laughs> it's is it's part of the core code. Yeah, the, 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 the Telesto function actually starts Destiny, if you didn't yeah. know. <laughs> but he, yeah, but he, he actually built on a Telesto. It, 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 see, you, many years ago, Telesto and Needler formed an alliance. Uh -huh. And Telesto and Needler actually run the entire universe. We think it's, you know... Uh, Samathum or, or Zebra Wrath. No, no, it's Telesto and Needler are actually the the men behind Telesto the curtain. Telesto is the entity. Case. We figured it out. Telesto mm -hmm. is the entity. Telesto is the end game boss. Oh my god. The final shape is going yep. to be Telesto. <laughs> that is the final shape. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, figured dude. it out. All right, well, we've solved it. Figured it out. Yeah. Yep. Now we all. Now we have to. Well, no, you say that like it's like like we're done. Like, okay, so we figured yeah. out that Telesto is the final boss. How do done. you beat the Telesto? The Telesto is that... Destiny. I, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless it's already got its way onto your hard drive, then you just have to buy a new Xbox, P PlayStation, PC, whatever. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. We, we have to give the ET treatment. We have to drive it out to a landfill out in the southwest of the U.S. somewhere and bury it in the desert and never speak of it again. I'm thinking so. He might be onto something. Welcome to Two Titans and a Hunter, a Destiny 2 podcast. A show where we discuss tips, tricks, and tools to help all Guardians succeed and enjoy playing more. What makes us different? Well, for starters, we're not streamers or YouTubers. We just have a passion for Destiny and are dedicated to keeping Guardians informed and up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 info, news, and opinions. We encourage your questions and feedback. You can contact us either by email at two titans and a hunter at hotmail.com or on Twitter at two titans underscore hunter. Now, on with the show. All right, so shall we get this uh, this train wreck out of the station? Move, yeah. move. move it off the platform. Yeah, welcome back, Parody. He's he's decided to rejoin the the land of us. I did. Even though, came back. Even though I we was... said no more holidays for you, you you snuck a sneaky one in there. Uh, to be fair, I was that, that was a holiday that was planned for me. I was planning to be here. And then my wife and family in town were like, hey, we could buy hockey tickets. We're going to go to the hockey game. Oh, what time's the hockey game? Oh, it's one o'clock on Saturday. And I record at 10. Hmm. So, yeah, that didn't work out exactly well. <laughs> I was told, uh, you're coming with us to D.C. We're going to museums to do a hockey game. To which I said, hey, guys, I won't be here because I'm going to D.C. to see a museum to the hockey game. <laughs> right. You chose life rather than death. I, I did. I believe I Alf, Alf made the same decision. He had a pressing engagement that was pressed upon him by his wife and couldn't make it. Haven't heard this week. I think he's been off enjoying his new clan. But, yeah. So should we do some what's happening next week in Destiny then, guys? Yeah. Uh, I think we should because it, it's, it's that time. It is. So, next week in Destiny, Lord Saladin brings Iron Banner back to the tower. Yay! Boost for Crucible ranks will be live for all Crucible matches. You can destroy your opponents in Momentum Control. So don't forget there's a challenge or triumph for Momentum Control this season. I think it's 75 kills, so don't forget to get that one done. And you can defeat Sepkis Prime in the Devil's Lair Nightfall. And that will also be our Grandmaster for this week. I believe that is the fifth one in the rotation, so hopefully we should be getting one more next week and then the week after we should have the GMs go live. I believe it's always on about week 12, but I could be wrong. So yeah, Iron Banner's back next week. And with Iron Banner, don't forget that it's light level enabled. So whatever light level you are without your artifact, that's what you will be going in because it takes the artifact out of the equation a bit like it does with Trials of Osiris. So you, it's best to try and get your gear up as high as you can, 1330, 
is the best. But, you know, being at 1300, it will affect you, but won't affect you as much. But, you know, just be careful going in. There are four powerful bounties that you can collect on each character. So don't forget you can get those. And it's they are kind of just simple, the ones they are like complete uh, matches, uh, capture zones, get kills with you know, power weapons, get kills with your super, get kills while you're under level. So sometimes being under what everybody else is at sometimes does help. So on occasion I have like a few weapons that are at 1250 just to bring my light level down slightly, like power weapons that can help bring my light down if I'm then playing against other people that are 1330. That will help kind of boost my, my progress on doing those bounties. And th those being powerful bounties will give you like between, I'd say it's plus two and three light levels, depending on where you are, where you're sitting with the light level. Um, and don't forget there's a quest. If you haven't finished the quest and you haven't finished the quest from previous seasons, uh, check your inventory on all your characters because there may be ones that you can complete for high stat armor and gear. I believe that I finished the last season's one. I think I left it on my warlock for quite some time and I completed that only this season and um, I got the I think it was the helmet and the chest piece and the machine gun from it all at power level for what my warlock was which was quite nice and high stat armor which I kept so yeah the the I believe the quest this season was to get I think it's pulse rifle kills and sidearm kills I think but I could be wrong so yeah I'm in banner capture zones and as parody always reminds people Capturing the zones will give you more power, which helps progress your super faster, which helps you then kind of, you know, get the game done quicker. And basically it's like control. Capture the zones. Uh, if you capture all three zones, you'll get a lockout on the other team for 20 seconds, I believe, which then gives you more points when you go around and kill more people. Once that happens, all the zones are unlocked and then you have to recapture the zones. Again, capture the zones. And that's it, basically. Control with lockouts and yeah have have fun in there so would you guys like to know what our seasonal challenges are for next week because there are none that's it we're out we're completely up to date we've had 10 weeks of challenges if you haven't completed any challenges you still have the time to go and do that before the end of the season the overall challenge is master of all which is complete all seasonal challenges during the season of the loss which is 75 I believe that they do cut out, I think it's two or three of those, so it does give you a bit of leeway with how you want to play. So if you don't like trials or if you don't like doing the GMs, then there is a possibility of a little bit of flexibility there in completing that. And that will give you a large pile of Bright Dust, and I believe it's about 500 Bright Dust. So it is worth doing. It's worth kind of saving up for the seasons that kind of we have. And like I have for this past couple of weeks, been buying Festival of the Lost stuff, uh, I've now completed like my three full sets of dinosaurs and I've got uh, some of the ghost shells, some of the emotes. So yeah, it's, it's worth kind of collecting that bright dust and storing it up. Because again, the regular stuff that you get from the engrams does just drop from whatever's kind of previously been dropped from other seasons. So it's worth kind of just saving up your bright dust for seasonal events to, to get the stuff that doesn't come around as often. So let's move into our Lost Sectors. Hello. So week 11 for our Lost Sectors, we have Monday the 1st of November will be the Empty Tank Tangled Shore Lost Sector and that will be dropping helmets. So if you're looking for any exotic helmets, that would be your best one to kind of do that. It's not a guaranteed drop every single time, but if you're chasing helmets of any kind of exotic type, if it's the new ones, it will be the first one to drop. If it's if you've got the whole collection, it'll just be a random helmet from a collection with a different stat roll. So it may be something you're looking at, kind of trying to craft your, your builds to get different stats in different areas. So they are worth doing. So these are the legendary Lost Sectors, sorry. And don't forget the master one is going to be whatever the legendary was the previous day. So again, Monday will be the Empty Tank Tangled Shore Lost Sector, be dropping helmets. That will then, on Tuesday when it rotates out, that will become the master version, so it will be a lot harder, but it will still drop your helmets in the Empty Tank Tangled Shore Lost Sector. So Tuesday's Legendary Lost Sector for the 2nd of November would be the K1 Logistics on the Moon, and that would be dropping your legs. And PV Shifty has guides for Monday and Tuesday for that. 
Wednesday the 3rd of November will be the K1 Communion on the moon and that will be giving you your arms. Time Sausage Game has got a guide for you for that. Thursday the 4th of November will be the K1 Crew Quarters on the moon and that will be dropping exotic chess pieces and that will be Time Sausage Gaming again. Friday the 5th of November, so remember, remember the 5th of November will be the K1 Revelations on the moon and that will be dropping helmets again and that's PB Shifty. Saturday the 6th of November will be the Concealed Void on Europa and that will be dropping legs. PB Shifty's got a guide for you for that. Sunday the 7th of November will be Bunker E15 on Europa and that will be your arms and PB Shifty's got a guide for you for that. And then back around to Monday, Monday the 8th of November will be Petition on Europa and that will be giving you your chess pieces and PB Shifty's got a guide for you for that. So that's your legendary lost sectors and if you don't like any of those guides legionless channel has a guide for literally every other all the lost sectors basically so you can check either one of those videos out or if you like somebody else go with them or suggest them in the comments just send us an email and say look this is a better guide than what you're suggesting so i like to keep my options open moving on to the eververse for the 2nd of november 2021 So for silver next week, we can have the Remembrance Weapon Ornament for the Dead Man's Tail Exotic Scout Rifle. And that would be for 700 silver. We have the Conga Line Emote. This is a legendary multiplayer emote for 800 silver. We have the Wanderer's Shell. That is an exotic ghost shell for 800 silver. And we have the Junkyard Navigator, which is your exotic ship. And that would be for 800 silver as well. And then for your bright dust, we have the Drat and Blast emote, that's a legendary emote, and that would be for 700 silver. We have the Vanguard Dare ornament for the Ace of Spades, and that would be 1,250 bright dust. We have the Neiman's projection, I know I'm saying that wrong, I do apologise, I was picked up on this. Neiman, Neiman, Neiman's projection, it's the Lion projection for 1,500 bright dust. We have the Amethyst Veil, vale, which is a legendary shader for 300 Bright Dust. The Double Handed Dance, which is a legendary emote for 700 Bright Dust. We have some exotic ornaments for each armor piece. So we have, for the Hunters, will be available the Death Wish, which will be the ornament for the Shards of Galanor, and that would be 1,500 Bright Dust. The Scorned Fortress, which will be the ornament for the Saitans Ramparts for the Titans. Again, 1,500 Bright Dust. And the ornament for the Transverse's Steps, the Mind Striders, for the Warlocks for 1,500 Bright Dust. And then we have the Neiman's Chariot and the Neiman's Shell. So these are the Ghost Shell and Sparrow with the Neiman, Neiman, whatever it is on the front of it exotics uh, the sparrow will be 2500 bright dust and the ghost shell will be 2850 bright dust the hand cannon vogue which will be a rare emote is 400 bright dust and then we have the laden lance which is the exotic ornament for the cloud strike sniper rifle for 1250 bright dust and finally the tetradon projection for 1500 bright dust basically the pyramids projection so yeah that's all your stuff for next week in destiny all your info of eververse all your guides and well not all the guides there are more guides that i could throw at you but you know limited guides to help you through the destiny universe he has to stop at some point so so respawn and yeah. or not even when are you gonna play with gator and iron banner he's he's been begging he's been he's been he's lusting he, after he you. hasn't been begging me he's been asking demon yeah, no, sorry, yeah, the demon. He, he's been wanting to play Iron Banner with the demon. When's it going to happen? When are you going to make this happen this week? When I'm playing Iron Banner, if he sees me, he can join me at any point. All right, so Gator, I'm going to need you to get up early in the morning to catch a night demon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just like a wabbit. Uh, demon, get, they, demon's they, not they, always... No, demon's up early sometimes when I'm up. Catch a wabbit. Yeah. Sometimes. But usually he's up at the very early in the morning. Because that's how time zones work. What about... Yeah. Only oh, no. well, Sometimes he's at work playing on his phone. <laughs> yeah. Which I might uh, do this week because I'm at work. Oh, God. <laughs> that's the best way to play Trials. I don't understand what, what your problem not. is. Yeah. It's really not. 
So 19 minutes for, for Halloween, I would like to go as that overlord hobgoblin or overload hobgoblin. They could not be stunned, could not be defeated, and refused to die. Oh my god. That was... That's, that's who I'd like to go as for Halloween, because I will clearly be in, in, invincible. Give me that guy and a Telesto, the world is mine. Respawn. Yo. We played a um, Nightfall. Just a Nightfall. It wasn't a GM or anything. I, what was it? Was it 13... Must have been a 1350, was it? Yeah, 1350. Right. Just a step down from the, the GM. So we're in there, we get down to near enough where Sadia is, yeah. and there's a hobgoblin. Uh, it's on overload, so it's bows. So we're, yeah. we're stunning this overload champion, and literally as we're stunning him, his power was going straight back up. He just he would not he would not go down past half, and the only thing that we could think of was that he was using his own stasis against us because he was using stasis to try and freeze us, but missing, hitting the wall in front of him. And stasis was then restarting his health gate back up and he wouldn't move and we couldn't hit him fast enough before he would die. And he was using game mechanics against us. He was omnipotent. He was unlimited power. I have seen where they just get like health bumps out of nowhere. No, no, no. Yeah, this, he this, would this not die for like, a good two minutes. This man tanked uh, two supers, countless arrows, messenger shots, rockets. He, he did not care. Unless he didn't those. care. Yeah, it, it eventually, because it was nice, nice Demon Blue Screen and I, eventually we were just like, let's just all unload, unload into him with our exotic bow, one each, over and over and over again, and hope eventually we could just stun him enough to get him down and then chuck grenades at him. And somehow that eventually worked. Super set, nothing else worked, just bow fire. Just constant, repetitive bow fire from the Monarch, the Tikus, and the Trinity Ghoul. And this and was just a, a taken yellow bar? Just just an overload Hobgoblin. Like, one of the ones, it's like right when you jump down, like, before you get to Sadia herself, it's like you're jumping down from all the different floating That's rocks, yeah, like, okay. on the left-hand side. Or he, he sits right there, and he's like, no, I refuse to die. I am the raid boss. It was like, just, just broken, just stupidly broken. I mean, it sounds like you didn't respect the man for his position of power. No, we, we I mean, clearly he, didn't. He was just trying to educate you, man. I mean, next we, time we were hitting him with we were hitting him with bows to stun him, and his health just was shooting straight back up. Just yeah. there was no like pause in it. It would just get to half, and then suddenly goes right back up to the top. And you're like, what the hell is happening? Yeah. Now, no, it would say like we would see the text. Night Demon has stunned. Parody has stunned. Blue Screen. We would we would see that text. The game would acknowledge the text that we had stunned him, but he did not care. No. <laughs> he did not care even a little bit. It was unreal. But eventually, we killed him and got through with it. But man, Dude, that sounds he like did my get to the point too. about yeah. It got to a point where we went. Should we just bypass him? <laughs> just <laughs> just leave him. Leave him Is be. He worth it? Can he yeah. be defeated? No, it took me. Oh my god, it took me so long to get. I've only got one completion of the Grandmaster, and we spent like, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half just trying to get past the part where you gotta, you gotta go in that elevator and hit him with the balls, right? Oh yeah. That that was the worst part about the whole GM was that one part. Oh my god. They're all like, oh, all you gotta do is you know put a few balls in reserve and just hang on to them, and when they come out, just nuke them or whatever. The thing about it is, is the balls kept disappearing. You know, I think Bungie soft patched it or whatever, but yeah, the balls were just disappearing. You, you couldn't have a few in reserve and trying to get those balls together while you're fighting for your life was such a, oh, it was, it was, it wasn't a good experience. The Snipefall is <laughs> ass. I don't like it at all. Yeah, it's, it's rough. And it's I still rough. didn't get a golf ball. We, we got, we got the, we got what is it the uh, the platinum the highest you can get still yeah. no golf ball I'm like you gotta be oh, kidding I got a golf ball on thirteen fifty I need I need five of them and I can't get any of them oh. so respawn what? this week at Bungie for the twenty eighth of October That's can odd. you read normally this week because if you can't I will do what I did to you last week <laughs> I don't know what you did last week <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And you I won't do, know what I'm going to do to your voice this week. Well, mm -hmm. probably not. So it sounds like if I don't know what the punishment is, I don't really have a reason to care about the punishment. Parody, no, can you it. do it then? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not having him 
being silly again. Well, why don't you just tell me what the punishment is and let me decide for myself? Punishment huh? is I change your voice. To what? I need chipmunk. to know these things. I was, oh, chipmunk is fun, though. What's wrong with chipmunk? I bet I sound great as a chipmunk. Not really. No. What? 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 You would never know. Uh, yeah, peace. I'm doing regular because nobody wants to help me do 1350s. You want to do 1350s? <laughs> peace is like, yes, but you wouldn't let me do it yesterday. Anyway. One day um, he'll figure out that whole switch mute thing, but again, we're still not there yet. No, I wanted y'all to hear it. We, we don't want to. Well, you didn't say you didn't want to. And, and, and God invites the conversation then. Besides, I, I, I didn't mute myself because I'm looking for the whole thing. This week what, at Bungie, what? they're replacing the flawless pool. They are. Oh, they that! Are. Oh, my God! Okay, I'm not... No rants. I'm just very disappointed. No, no more you rants, don't, You please. don't play trials. You don't get to rant about trials. I no. did! Put in, had the put in the, that I put in one the work, match put in the count. work, then you can complain. Play 30 or 50 matches of trials, then you get an opinion, sir. I did play Until that many. No. I just haven't played in two weeks. But I did play a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, well, it, it, it changes every week. You can't base your opinion off of two weeks ago because it's completely different this week from last week. I know it changes every ago. week. And ever since they, 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 they're they like, oh, well, now we're going to make the flawless pool start on Sundays. Well, that doesn't help me because I usually travel on Sundays. You complained oh, about well, that anyway. just gonna you, you know, you complained about that about three weeks ago. You don't get to complain about it again. It's just I'm old time. About it. Just also, saying. the flawless pool is nothing you'll ever have to worry about. So, yeah. The point is, is I have to worry about it because now there is no flawless pool. So the ghosts are going away. Festival of the Lost is coming to an end on Tuesday. Sad face emoji. But you know what is back? It's the best game mode in the world. It's Iron Banner Week. All week. No trials. So you don't even have to moan then, Respawn. It's just Iron Banner is back. Yeah, but ah. I don't want to go back. Huzzah. Game, like, yeah, what, what is it you Marines say? Hoorah? Get all excited. Yeah. Hoorah. Actually, that's right. Yeah. Good on you. So you've got until more, until like Tuesday, ooh, November rah, the second to finish your book, Let's eat candy, more, and wrap up any unfinished business you have with the event. So triumphs, challenges, etc., etc., and collect those masks. Do not forget to collect the masks because then you can use them next year when people come up to you in the tower and go, "Hey, where did you get that cool mask from?" You go, "Ha, I got that last year. You can't get it now." And then it arrives in Eververse the next week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't get it. Unless... Or or just be like, listen, I have this chicken mask from many years ago, and it's the only one I'm ever going to wear. So you, I will collect all the masks dutifully, and I will put them in the closet with the other masks. But really, I'm all about the chicken. The chicken is yeah. perfect. All about... And I think we discussed it last week, or, or you discussed it last week, that they did fix the event issues that they had with Candy and Spectral pages dropping from public events. I think we yeah. was doing one live on the show and found that, that you know, it was... They were dropping more often. They've also fixed the issue with Trials of Osiris because apparently if you didn't win, you weren't getting any pages even if you played the matches, but they've now fixed that. So hopefully if this podcast comes out in time and you have time to finish Trials and have time to finish Festival of the Lost, this will be relevant. If not, I do apologize. I'm slow at exiting. You can have to listen to next week for something else because there won't be any Trials next week, so don't have to worry about it. Or any candy to collect. You'll just have to eat the candy you have in real life while you play Iron Banner. Yes, all the Iron Banner. I was like, I guess we should talk, talk a little bit about what they did do to Trials this week, so you know people can moan about it and know what they're moaning about. Yeah, because yeah. you know, at least you need some reason so, to moan. So, so basically, you know the the flawless pool that um, they no, were kind the of implementing. Pool? Explain okay. what the flawless pool is, because right. I right. don't know. I, I, I I'm, I'm Joe Newby. Hello, I'm new to Destiny. So, What's so trials, they sir? have something called a flawless pool, and what it is is if you go flawless in Trials, you from that point forward, only deal with other people that went flawless, right? And the first week that that was implemented, I had a great time. The second week, they decided to change it up a little bit, right? And it still wasn't bad, but it wasn't as good as it was the first week. The week after that, they're like, oh, well, we're just going to set it so that it starts on Sunday afternoon, um, which even when they said that, I was like, that doesn't make sense. And I was even just thinking in American centers, that gives people like, what, a half a day? Assuming they work on Monday, right? So that's not great. And then Bungie came out and said, this well, yeah. This is slowly turning into a rant. No, no, I'm, you said describe it. I'm describing it. And then Bungie's like, oh, well, in that case, we're just going to remove it entirely because it doesn't make sense unless you live in America. So if you live outside of uh, America, the, the whole Sunday afternoon doesn't make any sense at all. 
So then now they just removed the flawless pool completely. And the reason the flawless pool was nice is because average guys like me can go in there, go against other guys, our skill level, our skill gap, and actually have a chance at going flawless. And more people went flawless the first few weeks than basically ever in Trials, right? So what's going to happen now is Bungie is going to try to implement their system where they're going to match you up against people that have the same number of clear uh, wins on their card as you and the same number of clears and the same number of flawless cards. And I think that's just going to be a whole freaking train wreck. And I think it was better with the flawless pool. But people are complaining because when you go flawless, all you have at that point in time is other flawless people and they're complaining about it. Which, if you're good enough to go flawless, you deserve it. So you should let all the rest of us that can't go flawless get as many rewards as we can because we can't go flawless. But no, because Bungie doesn't like us having nice things. And I, I'm not going to complain about it because I've said many times, if, you don't, if you're not good enough to play Trials, then don't play Trials. So I'm going with that mentality. But there was a moment when Trials was great for people like me. And now that moment is gone. Trials is still great for people like you. And Helpful. they do have a quick recap of the stats from the last couple of weeks. So matchmaking times are consistent with the past week, so they haven't, you know, dropped out with how how long it takes to get a match. There's still enough players in the pools to get a match. I think it was under a minute, wasn't it? That was doing quite well. Yeah, uh, I think it's hit like like forty Sorry. to fifty seconds depending on you know what pool you were in and what point in the weekend, but yeah. I mean, I, was, I I remember a day when I sat down with a cassette tape on a Commodore 64, had to put it in and wait five minutes for it to load up. You know, I'm quite glad that a minute is quite quick to get into a PvP <laughs> match. That's fair. Oh, That's Tell me you've been fair. gaming for a while without telling me you've been gaming for a while. <laughs> I think five minutes Betamax. is probably generous. Five minutes to get to the mini game <laughs> of Space Invaders in between. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, blowout rate drops slightly over week over week, so this is consistent with lower skill players not playing as much. The average hours played per player remains consistent across all skill levels. Overall player count went down each week, but that is expected during this portion of the season, and it's consistent with the past trials and Iron Banner performances. Uh, we still don't see any evidence of widespread, so widespread flawless card resets to avoid the flawless pool. Less than 0.5% of card players were resetting while still flawless and above three wins. Even still, this impetus to do this should be removed starting this week. More on that below. So now we look to freelance. Last weekend, we gave players a strictly solo queue for option for trials. We entered into the weekend with some assumptions on how the population could split, what might happen to matchmaking times, and a few questions on how to offer freelance options in the future. Here's a quick recap from the team on how things went. Ron Perry, do you tell us? Tell us. So they had over a million games played in each playlist this past weekend, with slightly more games played in the base Trials of Osiris playlist. The average hours played for the lowest skill players is up quite a bit over the past few weeks, while the average top end is about the same amount played, because if you're top end, you, know, you may complain, but you're still going to play it because you're still enjoying it. Interestingly, players who played a fire team some of the time and solo some of the time played almost three times as long this weekend as players who played either exclusively in solo or the or in a fire team. So they have a nice little graph that just shows the average games per player going down week over week, which again is to be expected. Uh, and the player numbers were, pr you know, pretty close. The people who just played freelance exclusively didn't didn't do any team, didn't go into the regular trials. Two hundred forty four thousand people. People who played exclusively in a fire team, 120,000, so about half of that number. And then 220,000 people played in a little bit of both. Some solo, some in a fire team, or at least some in a fire team, you know, in the in the, the regular trials list. So adding that up, that's quite a lot of people because that's split into three different groups. That's not 220,000 people combined from right. those two. That's like nearly... That's that's a hell of a lot of players because if you remember when trials would it, was at its lowest, it was around what the fire team exclusive players were, which was one hundred twenty thousand, and now we're getting two hundred forty four thousand exclusive freelance players and people that dabble across both. So surely that this is good numbers for trials across the board. Yeah, I mean just yeah, the past weekend you know you know five hundred sixty thousand or so people played trials overall. 
So a little over half a million people playing Trials seems like a fairly healthy pool. You know, I don't know how well, many I mean, people play, it, play anything on a daily basis. Like well, whenever we had the flawless pool, you know. I, well, I don't know. They don't tell me, but you know, you know, the games played, you know, have gone down. You know, the average games played per player have gone down from what looks like in week one, there, you know, almost 40, 38, 39 games maybe, and then week six was at thirty or like twenty. 25, 26, you know, mid 20 somewhere. They just have the week one through six and then zero to 40 in increments of 10. So it's hard to read your graph, Bungie. Um, but yeah, so I mean, the numbers went down, but still, it's it's a good, healthy population now. And that's down from where it was to be in the season. And then they do say about a quarter of the people, 25.5% of people did go flawless, lower than any other week, but likely fall out of matches being fair. If it doesn't drop below 20% for a weekend, the lighthouse should feel attainable. So that is. That's sort of Bungie's I mean, at least, you know, one of their metrics. If, if 20 people can go, 20% of the people playing can go flawless, you know, it feels like an attainable thing, which I'd be curious to see what that, again, has been for other weeks. Well, it was like it 30%, feels- 32% the previous weeks, I thought, right? So it sounds like it's gone down. And it almost no, I sounds think like that was the, re- the blowout rate, what you're, you're thinking about. There was, oh, you think? The okay. blowout rate was oh, around maybe. 30%. But that's what I mean. Even if there's less players playing overall, and less, and those same players are playing less games overall, it sounds like you know people are kind of upset, like I am, that the flawless pool is going to go away, or that the flawless pool was messed with. Because the week that they implemented the flawless pool, what were they saying in the twelve that they had record numbers of people playing and record numbers of people going flawless? I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> you know. Well, well, that, well, that's their that's their entire thing. Like, they start out this whole thing about trials basically saying, we're making changes week over week, we're trying out different things, we have assumptions we want to test, and until they test them, they're not going to know. You know, I think, you know, the, the feedback I've been seeing is pretty roundly, this is the worst possible version of what you've done so far. But you, in the a way, you've got to... The one or the one last week? The one that's active now, this weekend, as we record. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, right. the, the one that the, the, basically this is talking about. And yeah, but like you have to, you have to put it out into the world. You can you can theorize and guess all you want. And people are saying, oh, if they just would have asked you, asked a content creator, we could have told you, blah blah blah. But you still have to see how the game's out over half a million people. Fair. Like you know, you know, again, it's worth doing. It's one weekend. It's not you know, yes, this sucked. You're not going to do it again. You, you you got some interesting metrics from it. And again, Bungie's still looking at more than you know. Bungie's looking at so much stuff behind the scenes. Like they're obviously looking at numbers and matchmaking times and pool sizes and all this stuff. Because one of their big fears in the past was if we split the pools up, how is that going to work for the game? Are, 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 yeah. are we, are we going to see just a huge drop in population or have those people at, at the higher levels have super long times and a super small pool to play in if it's matching like number of wins or number of flawlesses? But, you know, but just, you know, you got to game all that out over the half million people over a weekend to see how it actually works. Uh, yeah, and they do say the average match making times were consistent around 50 seconds for full fire teams and solos. And regularly about a hundred seconds for duos, which I guess that makes sense. If there's two of you, it's going to take a little longer to, than just throwing one or one or three into a pool. And the Sunday somebody asked earlier, pool, "Where's the uh, the the single player icon?" The same same, same exact same exact. It's not there this weekend. There is no solo queue this weekend. Okay, but up, but but when it is up, it's the exact same way that the survival. And survival freelance or iron banner iron banner freelance work you've got the big main icon and then like up to the like the upper right there's like the little smaller icon that's where your flawless or your um not flawless pool that's where your solo pool be exact same place it is for survival and then this week up upcoming iron banner and if you if you look at the numbers from what we had last week we had two different playlists going and if you think the number of exclusive players in the solo playlist against what it is for the fire teams, I think that shows that they could possibly get away with a solo playlist as well as a normal playlist for trials. Again, though, I think there was worries that once people that had gone solo flawless, they were then put into their own separate flawless pool if they continued to go flawless. So you'd only have, if you wanted to continue solo flawless, it would be a smaller pool than the fire teams flawless. So you'd literally have four pools in the end. You know, you'd have the non-flawless for both and then the flawless for both. I don't know how Bungie are kind of... Maybe they were worried from the numbers last week. That's why they've changed it this week. So that if this week works out better, they'll implement the solo playlist again and then see how that balances out against matching against other people that have played the same amount of games or won the same amount of games. But you can see that 
there is an argument there for a solo playlist. Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's healthy enough to maintain that playlist. And, and, and also, I know one thing, the other thing they talked about is the overall blowout rate for games, you know, games that ended in a 5-0 one way or the other. It was almost as low as their best post revamp week when the Flawless Pool went active Friday afternoon at 27.8%. This was the highest, I'm sorry, this was powered by a significant number of fire teams versus fire team matches and solo versus solos, both of which had about a 25% blowout rate. So you're, you know, the odds of you getting blown out this this past weekend were about one in four, which I don't know, in my 30 or so games I played seemed about accurate. Some, you know, the rest of them were, it may have been five to one or five to two and not quite a blowout, but pretty close to it. But the, yeah, the having going in solo, you're still subject to, you know, the best single player in that lobby is going to win. Whoever's team they're on, it's sort of this, like the same thing playing sixes. You get the one guy who's unbroken six times with 19 flawlesses. Oh, yeah, absolutely. One of the teams, at like, least like, it's not like win. a at team full of that guy. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, no, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't fix that, but yeah, but it absolutely fixes the you're playing a team of three people communicating and, you know, calling out and knowing exactly what they're doing. So at least you've got a chance. And yeah, I, I, I played, you know, about 20 matches in solo and then about 10 matches in the regular regular trials list just to sort of see how it stacked up. And uh, I mean, basically, you know, solo experience was better overall and the and the regular experience was sort of the same. It's, you know, it's a crapshoot of either you're up against the three stack or you have a super good guy on your team and you win. It just sort of depends. So did you play before the flawless pool was implemented or did you play after? I played I played some Saturday and some Sunday, so a little bit of both. Okay. And did you find it very similar to how you were being matched up? I think so. I mean I mean I last week was Cauldron, which I is, is not a map I enjoy or play very well at. Yeah. And and it sort of seemed more or less the same. It seemed like a we're gonna sort of stand off with one team in the middle room and one team in the side room where they start and sometimes you might get flamed one way or the other, but for the most part it's like a civil war style. I'm going to stand here. You're going to stand here and we're going to shoot at each other and whoever gets the first pick wins. Yeah. But I didn't really notice. And I played, I played half, half warlock and half Titan because I've been really enjoying the arc buddies and just to see sort of how that played out, see if it made any difference. Just, I don't know, just for fun. And yeah, it, it I, know, I, I did not enjoy my trials experience last weekend in terms of success. It, I, it was the first weekend I didn't get either character to like the 50 wins overall because we were just we were just getting wiped we, we we might get a five and one or a five and two but very rarely did we actually win a round of five and i just i'm at the point where I, I i buy the card and i let the card run out and i just sort of don't reset it over the weekend i go i don't care about being in the flawless pool it's just not going to happen no. so i'm happy to play in the or, 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 or not the flawless pool but i'm happy to play on a card that is not flawless that i've already been you know you know I'm not playing for the lighthouse. I'm just playing to play, which I don't think makes any difference really in the the matchmaking. But it's I don't know. It, it's just sort of bad either way. Like I am not a great trials player. I'm not a great PvP player. But, but you've been incentivized to go in there and play a, bo a bit more than we used to be able to play, especially with the Absol solo. Yeah, absolutely. And because they had increased the rank, I now have I think four trials engrams sitting on my characters that I haven't turned in yet. Nice. which is more than I would have gotten out of all of the last three seasons of trials. Cause I can just yeah. go in and play and turn in bounties and rank up that way. That's what, that's what I'm playing it for. I play trials. Like I play iron banner. Like I'll, like I'll go in just to earn the XP, just to finish bounties, just to, you know, if we get a couple wins, great. If I get some weapon drops, wonderful, but I'm, I'm just playing for the engrams. That's it. But don't forget. If you do play trials, once you reset your rank, like you can do with, uh, normal crucible and strikes and gambit once you've collected the ascendant shard golf ball it then puts you on a different track and again you, the the most annoying part of that is that you have to pick up the hand cannon and the sniper as part of the track so whatever role it is that week even if mm -hmm. you wanted it or not you have to kind of pick it up but it gives you a second track and on the second track it gives you a possible role of the messenger and then it goes through to like an exotic engram again like you can only reset it once for the shards, similar to strikes and gambit and PvP. But it, it gives you different weapons on the second time that you've reset it. So I've only got to the second track like the, once, and maybe it'll give you a different weapon if you get to the, the third time you reset it. But it's just nice to know that those weapons each week re-roll themselves, so you can leave them there as long as you want as well. Even but the weekly different... featured one re uh, yeah. re rolls itself? Yeah. Each week, oh. the hand cannon and the sniper rifle, which are on the first time that you 
you run it. We'll re-roll each week and give you different rolls on it. And then once well, you've collected those, it goes to the too. second track. And at the moment, I've got the messenger sitting on the second track. So every couple of weeks, I go back and check to see what it is, because I can collect it, but I'm not going to collect it just yet. I, I mean, I've got a really good roll on, on my one, but I'm, I'm looking for maybe one with Kill Clip on the end rather than Outlaw and Desperado or Rapid Rapid. I think I've got Rapid well, Hit. Desperado. Well, the one, I wish the one, I had Rapid Hit Desperado. The one, the one that Dim tells me. Dim says the one on that second track has a Kill Clip Outlaw Extended Mag Chamber Compensator or Flute of Barrel that's on the uh, same 14. So maybe your Kill Clip Outlaw one is there for you, Night Demon. There you go. Yeah, you know, I, I, I pulled up Dim because I hadn't. Yeah, I reset my rank this past that past weekend as well. It's, again, because they were saying you get bonus, you know, bonus XP, bonus trials rank for playing. So I was like, well, let me go play the heck out of this. And I think I'm on, looks like I'm on five now on the little thing. On the little, yeah. um, you got a professional ranking. PvP player in the make, huh? Oh, no, not at all. Very, very much a filthy, filthy casual amateur. But yeah, you know, I hadn't even noticed it was, yeah. Yeah, I didn't even notice that it had switched over to the messenger because I don't really look at those other than to. You know, I'll, I'll go pick them up every couple of weeks when I go, okay, I haven't touched this in a while. I should go uh, do that. Or if he yells at me to go reset my rank. But yeah, but that, I, I didn't realize they were re-rolling those, those weapons in the uh, in the rank rewards too. That's nice. Hmm. I played, I think it was last week after I finished in the podcast, and I was, I was a bit tired, admittedly, so I didn't really put a full lot of effort into it. But I managed to get five wins in a row and then completely fluff it. I th it was my fault. I, I did let the team down twice <laughs> on my card, so I do apologize. But I found it quite enjoyable. It was people of similar skill levels. I, I believe they went like 5-4, five, 4-5, four, 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 five, some of the games. Really, really good kind of competitive matches. There was only one match, and I can't remember the name of the guy, but it's it's probably going to be in the YouTube this week. He stood at spawn and just shot mm. in the air while me and my teammate <laughs> ran off and were oh. trying to... He... No, that was your worse. teammate that was doing that? Yeah, our own uh, teammate, right? Oh, he, he then saw that we died and he jumped off the map. And we were like, what are you doing? And he did this every round. He would just oh, jump off the map. So two tough. of us... No, we won, mm -hmm. but the two of us had oh. to carry the two of us oh, wow. to victory. In the last, I just wanted the hell out of his ass, dude. Last round, it was lucky that I had a super up because he wasn't playing at all. He just he, he was running uh, around emoting geez. and doing anything he could to not play the game. And I... I didn't understand because I was on like a, about four wins. So this guy must have been equivalent to be kind of queued up with us. Probably because yeah. really you scared him to get to that point. Maybe, yeah. That oh, that's so irritating. Yeah, I didn't. I yeah, didn't. Have I, did, any... I definitely reported the hell out of him. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not the guy that does that kind yeah. of stuff either. So, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, 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 I totally. If you're gonna sit there and do that, I'll, I'll report you like every time. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry. That's like either play the game or don't. like if you're, like even if you're terrible. Load into the game and at least try. At least be bait for the, your teammates. At least stand there and you know emote next to them be or whatever. The to give them shield. something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, throw a rift down, throw a wall up. Like at least be a, a distraction, if nothing else. Like yeah, I was. I, I had one. I loaded into a couple last week where I had one teammate who sort of stood there, stood there, and I was like, oh no, oh no. But then he eventually, you know, getting a drink, changing batteries, whatever. You know, eventually he did start playing every time. But like the first couple of seconds of every round, it was like. Okay, okay, come on. Like, you, 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 he was you, playing you, his gotcha game, round. dude. Let, let him collect his coins, bro. Right, something. Yeah, no, that's that's so infuriating, though, when it's like, come on, we could actually maybe win this, and you're going to stand here and just not even try. Just not yeah. even... Yeah. That's frustrating. Well, the bright side, they won. So, congratulations. Oh, that's... I've, I found him. His name was Bad Rep 2. And I thought, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Well, there you Don't go. play with Bad Rep 2. Ends up to his name, huh? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Play on his throwaway account. Yes, I think he is actually. Anyway, so yeah, it, it was enjoyable. I think but I'm, I'm interested to see what it is like this week. So, I mean next the, week. This weekend. There is what? no next weekend for trials. Next no. weekend is Iron Banner, my friend. Oh wait, so I thought. Hold on. Okay. What we're talking about in this twop is happening right now. Oh, okay. okay. It's live today. You can go play it right now. My days are all this Iron Banner, and as a reminder. Yeah. No trials. Yeah. So one thing that Bungie isn't happy about is the team balance. So they've noticed that how solo playing list isn't doing a great job of balancing the teams, especially nope. when balancing two teams when there aren't any fire team mismatches. 
So for trials, it's currently just picking teams randomly. So like we've yes. always said, you yes, randomly might get the best player in the whole world, <laughs> or you might get all of you that are really bad, which doesn't help. I mean, you know, it, like you said, it's the roll of the dice. Yeah. So, it could put the two unbroken flaws guys on one team and give you the guy who's 1290. You know, it, it could happen. They're going to be looking very carefully at how teams are selected over the next few weeks. Not next week, because it's Iron Banner. And hopefully have a better balance in the oh, next time every freelance time you rolls say that, like It's like a little nail on a chalkboard and my brain goes off every time you do that. <laughs> I am better. Yeah. This is one side this is one downside of not using skill based matchmaking in trials in situations where skill would be helpful. To balance two teams of solo players, it isn't even a data point the system can look at. So speaking of which Oh, that's interesting. So yeah, they, they don't even have a thing to say, look at this and figure this out. It's uh, a hodgepodge. It is literally RNG. Wow. Yeah. That's a, yeah, wow. Well, yeah I was kind of wondering, because I thought at one point they were doing like, you know, doing the whole like pick, pick the best person over here. And then like, if there isn't an obvious second best person, put like the, two, you know, pick your unbroken flawless guy on this team and then pick like your other two, you know, above average guys on the other team and then go back to the first team with the, with the super good guy. So it's, yeah, yeah, so they're just, yeah, they're just like, here's six people, let's roll the dice. Stuff. And yet now we're supposed to understand that they're going to have an, a metric where they can see how many how many wins you have on that card, how many wins you have overall, how many flawless you have, and your skill uh, level. Obviously they all can of those do that. Things, Dude, obviously those are, they can do those that. Those are numbers in a database somewhere. Of course they have all that. That's easy yeah. enough to do. Well, but like, yeah, but like, how do you, how do you, yeah, I mean, those are all just numbers. You can put those numbers in a database and go, okay, let me get, give me everybody with six wins and... You know, two full is this week. Show me all those people that are playing right now. Yeah. So, Parody, what's happening in our freelance future? What is happening in our freelance? Well, I was saying, if there's, is there any? There wasn't really anything terribly interesting on there. The no. blowout rates they're they're about they're about the same over the last two weekends by hour. Like, didn't really change. You know, depending on the day you're playing, you had about a thirty percent chance of getting blown out. That's just life. Yeah. Pretty uh, much freelance. the same. Yeah, and yeah, they had some more numbers to break down, but again, not terribly insightful numbers it was about you know it gets you get less of a chance to, as it blow blows out as you get closer to the end of the week i don't know whatever as you but freelance better. yeah freelance futures oh uh, we like the overall out outcome and vibe of the freelance queue and both playlists seem to have a viable number of players good good so we're looking at running the freelance occasionally for the remainder of season 15 but are still trying to de yeah, trying to determine what feels right we will let you know so freelance is going to be coming back throughout the rest of the season, but possibly in different forms or different laps or different permutations. Oh, this week, if you want to play, you have to have a fire team. No, you don't no, have you can to. Still do solo duo. You can still go in and. Well, I thought just... you just said the freelance was gone. Is well, no, the but freelance you... solo. The freelance is solo, but you can still load into regular trials as a solo or duo. You just don't have a particular. You're just the not the matchmaking. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. There isn't. There isn't a separate icon to click to k take you into a solo only freelance experience. It's gotcha. you're in there with, and and this week it's it's been a hodgepodge. Sometimes I get teams. Sometimes I get six random people. It just depends. Um, but long term, Bungie is exploring some single player solutions, preferential matching of full fire teams against other full fire teams, duo against duo plus solo against another duo plus a solo. We don't have any specific, you know, specific release target or information on this, but it won't be prior to the next season. So basically, what you can take away from this season is freelance is coming back. They like the way that worked. There's enough people to make that a viable thing, and they're going to continue to tinker with trials. And they're looking at a single player solution to roll out probably full time in season 16. So until February, trials is a is a pool to play with, and uh, they're going to make changes to it. Uh, have we covered the flawless pool changes, or is there anything in this that's actually worth going over? I mean, it does the say flawless yeah, they... pool changes. There just isn't a flawless pool anymore. That's the change. Not well, right I mean, now. But, but I mean, the words the Bungie wrote, like the thing that that, that yeah. they actually put out. Well, I mean, respawn respawn's already kind of covered the flawless pool changes, saying that you know, originally we had a flawless pool that, when you went flawless, there was a pool that you went into, and that was it, and it was enabled from Sundays, starting. At the, this weekend, they're rolling out a new system and leaning into a weekly performance metric. So whenever you match in trials, in addition to trying to match people with the same number of wins on their card, you will also attempt to be matching people with roughly the same number of overall wins for the weekend. If you can't find anyone to match against, it will eventually expand out to find you lesser similar matches. 
Yeah. That. Yeah. So for PvP gods who go flawless ten times a weekend, they will end up matching other players who have, for example, seventy plus wins on their guard, no matter awesome. how they got them. So that's the only kind of difference. It's not playing flawless mm. against flawless. If you've got seventy wins on your card, ah. it's it's the carriers and the carried are going to be in that same pool. Yes. Uh -huh. So yeah, yeah. I was listening to I can't remember if it was on Twitter or on Massive Breakdown because it all runs together in my brain now. But Mercury is talking about and some others, you know, Destiny Fun Place and some others, you know, who play a lot of PvP, saying this is sort of your worst case scenario for everybody this weekend because it's yeah. just looking at game so yeah so if you got carried to the lighthouse or you got carried on a couple of cards or you have a buddy who plays and you're just the the second or third so they can you know they can do really well and you can sort of be there with them it may put you into that top tier i'm a 3 kd pvp destiny god and when you are not that and then anytime you step into trials this weekend you're going to be in that pool which you know you're swimming in a very deep end you do not deserve to be in so it just it wrecks your experience. It wrecks the experience for people who get matched with you, and yes, yeah, it's, it's a lose lose all the way around. It also stops the players from getting to six wins and resetting their card because it keeps a, a crew of what you've done. So if you do six six wins, reset your card. Win another six, reset your card. If you're carrying people, that's going to keep accruing up and accruing up, and and you will eventually start playing the flawless players a lot more often. Mm -hmm. So if you're one of these people that you know reset an average player like us, if we get to five wins. And we we have two blowout matches, and we reset our card. We do that again. We have more of a chance of then coming up against the flawless players or a flawless you know group mm -hmm. that have done seven straight wins, and they're you know they're just continuing to play for that weekend. So yeah, like you said, it it's a very dodgy ground to play on. But the only way we can kind of see how it's going to work out is if we go and play it. Yeah, and that's I mean that's why I've been. This season, I told myself, I'm going to go into trials every weekend where I can and just throw yeah. myself in there and go. Because, again, I can I can earn rank even if I do nothing, even if I if we get wiped off the map 5-0 like I happened happened a couple of times on Saturday this weekend. Just or, or I'm sorry, Friday afternoon I was playing yesterday and just I mean, just getting wiped, just the, getting the floor wiped with us. But people who are clearly, if not a three stack, should have been a three stack and were just absolutely de demolishing us. But I was still completing bounties. I was still earning rank. Like I was still getting something out of it. Yeah. So I just said, you know, I'm gonna go in, win, lose, draw. I'm gonna go in, and you know, my goal every weekend is to try to get the, those 50 wins for the pinnacle drop. But if it doesn't happen, like it didn't happen last weekend, no big deal. I've got on the warlock this weekend. I may try the titan this weekend. I'm about halfway there. Yeah. But oh, but but the oh, what is that? Dang it. The map was in my brain. What's the what's the map this weekend? Widow's That's has Widow's Court. Yeah. That Ooh. is, it's not as bad. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it is. It is not a. It is not a great map. It was it, it, a lot more, a lot fewer snipers than I thought we were going to see. But man, it's it's messengers, messengers, and dead man's tails. And I've seen less mythoclasts overall. And maybe it's just because people have switched to other things. Mythoclast, as we record, is actually sitting at number four this week. Dead man's tail, messenger, and adored are all sitting above it. And then Me Vex is number four, then Messenger Adept, Eye of Soul, Palindrome Adept, Main Ingredient, Ace of Spades, and No Time to Explain are the top ten weapons. So yeah, it's a little bit different meta for weapons this week, but still just, yeah. And while we're on the topic of the Vex, we're still not have one. 36 runs, no Vex. 36 and 0, baby! Except that's the bad 36 and 0. It's like 0 and 36, I don't know. Moment of silence for a hunter who will never get his vex. Oh well, never mind. No, I'll get it. I'll just get it after it's been nerfed and useless. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's the way it works. Yep. Sad so panda. Bungie do say that this allows them to remove the flawless pool, having this new way of working things out. But it does have a potential downside with longer match making times. But I'm thinking it's going to be better for the again for the people that don't play until the, the last minute on the Mondays and Tuesdays because they will then potentially be matching up against other players that haven't played anything that week and potentially the lower skill players or average skill players will then kind of get on at that point you still could have like the trials gods that haven't played that weekend and decide to log in as well but it it kind of gives you a bit more of a chance of going up against people that haven't played at all that weekend Whereas your trials gods will log on on Friday, they'll get you know their seven wins on their card, 
they may then it may have a potential of them being able to do like three flawless cards on all three characters which may keep them happy but then at that point they're up to 21 wins in total you won't be matching those players which is quite nice so it i can see that it, it does have some downsides of where you sit in the card matchmaking with um, how matchmaking times could work or you know it could benefit you depends on how many games that you've actually won or played so over the next few weekends they're going to be looking at how much matchmaking times go up and how it affects the match quality yeah it looks like they have their eye on the on those blowout rates again because again they, they have another breakdown of you know blowout rates for overall fire team for fire team and solos and you know, again, they say we want to keep the numbers of blowouts to around twenty percent if possible. And in an ideal world, that's what they want to see. And they're they're sitting at like more closer to thirty percent. So they're trying to make those blowout wins games, you know, lesser. Bring those down to about twenty percent of the time you play. So it's interesting, at least that they they're saying, hey, here's what our goal is. Here here's where we are now, and I think we're getting numbers, even if it maybe doesn't mean a whole lot to us as lay people looking at this, being like, well, these are numbers, but we need more numbers to have these really mean something to us. Right. But it's interesting, they're, at least, they're giving us, they're not just saying, this is the biggest trials weekend. They're saying, here's how many people played. Here's how many people played here. here you know, 560,000 people is more is something to go on and at least a metric to look at. Mm -hmm. I suppose we'll have to play and wait and see. Yep. And we should also take a moment to uh, give a warm welcome to a new community manager, Liana, a.k.a. Hippie, who is joining the community management team. I saw that. She, mm -hmm. I think she announced that a couple of weeks ago, but now it's official that she's joined them. Yep. Now, now respawn. And disappointingly, she is a recently converted Titan main. Sorry. So I don't know what right. she converted from, but she is she has now joined the pro the proper Titan the, ranks. The good sure. news is she's not a community manager that will be involved in kind of giving respawn any information, like DMG and Cosmo. So he can't blame her for anything. Oh, give me time. Yeah, he's. I mean, he so will. It just won't be justified. <laughs> And did you guys take advan take part in the uh, in, in the costume contest? Uh, yeah. The scary pumpkins and costumes. Nope. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, well, Kimber Prime has a very lovely Vex one. That I mean, very very Vexy. If you die in the vault, you are reborn as something different. She has a nice Vex Titan because Vex are wonderful. Uh, Blue's looking kind of sus over there from Charlie Homan. Uh, apparently, they decided to bring. Among Us into Destiny, which is just kind of silly. Again, all Titans looking very silly as their Titan selves. Can't tell what this is. Pum oh, okay, right. Artwork. Yeah, got it. Pumpkins. Artwork. Artwork. Videos. Lovely. Yeah, Hikari Leo 4 with the Haunted Law Sector pumpkins. And then uh, I do appreciate the Red Hawk Moons, uh, the turkey hunting laser tag experience with the Laser tag weekend pumpkin with the laser going through its skull. Very good. Festival of the Lost Jurassic Park style with dinosaurs because there are dinosaurs. There are now. And, uh, and no one will save from the insatiable rage of the saint. And oh, that's a really cool, that's a cool pin, cross stitch, whatever it is. It's beautiful. Love it. And they'll be sharing more winners on their way up to the 31st, which is tomorrow. So I guess they'll be sharing the winners somewhere else that's not the 12th. Maybe next week we'll see some winners, but yeah. On a tweet, probably. Yeah, so maybe. these are all winners that are in the 12th. So that's good. So if you see your, your art or your creations in the 12th, you are a winner. That and if you don't see them in there, you're a winner anyway, in my heart. You just weren't good enough to beat these guys. Loser. What? what uh, I'm curious, Parody. What? <laughs> what is a rutabaga? Just in general, what is a rutabaga? It's a, it's a, it's a root vegetable. Okay, describe yeah. it to me, because we may have it over here, and it's called something completely different. Well, I'm looking up rutabaga because I think I know what it is. It's basically a turnip. There's a turnip. Do you know what a, you know what a turnip is? Yeah. Yeah, it, it looks like a white turnip, apparently. Basically, it's a root vegetable. Looks like a turnip. It's white. Grows in the ground. So that's, apparently, that's uh, a turnip. They're they're increasing. Okay. We, so, so if you've planted rutabagas, you now have so many, so many rutabagas. And apparently, it, a exploit was recently discovered that allowed players to generate more orbs than intended, when triggering certain supers. So to prevent uh, the exploitation of this issue until a fix can be deployed later this year. Bubble? What? 
players who experience extreme sustained frame rate issues in PvP environments may now encounter more frequent rutabaga errors. Some of these errors can be mitigated by not alt-tabbing or changing your video settings during matchmaking. So no alt-tabbing respawn. No alt-tabbing for you or you get rutabagas. Um, players who encounter rutabaga errors while per participating in PvP for reasons other than reproducing the orb generation issue should report the details of what they are doing to the dedicated help form threat. And this is one thing that I've seen uh, Cheese and others say, don't use this, you're going to get banned out of PvP. Like, but, like Bungie is watching this, so don't use it to exploit things or you could have yourself soft banned for a day or a weekend or whatever. But yeah, there's some videos out there of just just creating huge amounts of orbs, just Titan Bubbles raining orbs down over and over and over again, which is uh, what you would like to fix. And they did make a make a small fix early in the week for, with Hotfix 3312, which really should just be called the one about Telesto this week. No, this week's Telesto patch. Mm hmm. So, yeah, so on the 28th, so that was what? Thir yeah, so Thursday, they did push out. A couple of patches, one that should make you Nightfall players happy. They changed how the mini screebs from the Festering Rupture modifier are networked to give you more consistent experience. This should prevent the mini screebs from burrowing under the ground and ending an otherwise perfect Nightfall run. Mm -hmm. uh, trials and other match made activities should no longer trigger baboon errors if players quit between rounds or during a hard wipe. So competitive PvP, fewer baboons. Uh, the descriptions of the Pinnacle Season challenges better direct players to Pinnacle tiered rewards. So, yeah, they made the description clear. Fix an issue that allowed allied players to be damaged and frozen by Diamond Lance, and an issue where more Sentinel Shield super energy was being drained from Scorn Sniper attacks than intended. And last, but certainly not least, because it would hate me if I spoke anything ill about it, Telesto, we love you. They fixed some issues with Telesto. Editor's note restart the clock so right. no longer attaches to allies will instead impact and detonate bolts can no longer be shot and destroyed and they reduce the bolt lifetime from 10 seconds to about five seconds when spawned on the environment proximity Ooh. to enemy still detonates so can't stick it to your friends very sad well, can't be shot and destroyed no. should no. fix a number of things and the bolts last less time, which just makes me sad because I got a couple of really nice double kills with Telesto and Trials yesterday. Anyway. What made me laugh with this is Cheese Forever put out a video before they did this patch and said how many more things are going to be broken with Telesto this week after they patched it. And then literally, <laughs> as they patched it, he dropped two more videos, which I will link in the show notes, that Telesto is mm -hmm. not fixed 100%. Um, let me just Of course not. We have. Yeah, that's what it says to fix some issues. You'll never fix all the issues. <laughs> Let's have a look. So we have Telesto block supers in PvP and Telesto glitch with infinite explosions. So that's not fixed. And if you want to check those out, I'll link those in the show notes. <laughs> or maybe Telesto is just evolving to, to reach its final form as that overload hopgoblin. Maybe that's what he started life out of. Uh, no, what happened is um, while the rest of the world is raising the AI, Bungie accidentally found it. And now we mm -hmm. can't get rid of it. Oh, yeah. Telesto is sentient. The end. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stop trying to kill it. Just, you know, put it on its own server. Let it live its life in the, the best way it can. And, yeah. Telesto has been removed from Destiny 2. Forever. Mm -hmm. So they did put a couple other hot fixes, hot fix notes in the TWAB. Where they say exploits for the Telesto and Rhinus harness have been fixed. Ha. Huh. These exotics have now been re-enabled in all activities. And the year one faction raid in Trials Ornaments will now correctly list class specific synth weave as unlock options in the appearance screen. Nobody there you go, cares. Andy. Nope. You were asking about that earlier. Ah, uh, there we go. Andy cares. There you go. Well, it was bugged for him. Somebody I has mean, to. Yeah. And uh, this is the final week of Festival of the Lost. It'll conclude the weekly reset on November 2nd. So turn in all your candy, turn in all your manifested pages, collect all your triumphs before then, or don't. Eh, it's up to you. Players should also keep in mind that the power level of the Masquerader's helmet will return to zero at the conclusion of the event and should make sure to unequip it prior to attempting to participate in high-level content to ensure they meet the entry requirements. That's a new thing. I think they should do that. If you want to run around with a chicken head all year, I believe you, you should reserve the right to do so. Right. right. It would make the game way more interesting. Or or just or let me put that ornament on other things. Just, just yeah. let, me be a, let me be a chicken. Let him be a chicken. Yo, let, can let we send the, the, the chicken head? Is that a thing? Right. Let, let, let me use that. It, it'd be great. 
Yeah. Well, one thing is some things I can't do though because they're known issues. Uh, the submachine is metal only appears after eliminating three players without dying instead of two as specified. So if you're trying to collect submachinist medals for some reason, gotta kill three people. The emblem of the MVP of a trials match incorrectly displays the observing player's emblem. Cool. The clan up triumph may not be unlocked as intended. Don't know what the clan up triumph is, but uh, may not be unlocking, so stop trying for it. The we are enough triumph doesn't unlock for players who complete the override last city. A small arrow is following hunters around when wearing certain pieces of gear. <laughs> Respawn, have you noticed any small arrows following you around? I have not. Um, I'm not uh, wearing the right gear, it would seem. Uh, pl please someone tell us uh, tell us somewhere. You, you, you know where to find us. Uh, what can I wear to have a small arrow following me around as a hunter? Because that's kind of amazing. Players in Steam are experiencing larger than issue FPS drops in the tower and orbit and when viewing the roster. So that could be what whoever in chat said to you earlier respawn. Mm -hmm. So orbit tower viewing roster, your FPS is drop. The relic orb may not spawn in the corrupted strike when fighting Sadia. You no, know, didn't run into oh, that one. Just the overload go. god. And you know, full list of issues. An issues article. If you're seeing things, tell Bungie they'll work on getting them fixed. Or they'll pass them on to the team. Or they'll just tell you we don't care. It's working as intended. Pretty much. And that's and that's what we broke. And that, well, not what we broke. That's what they broke. And that's what they fixed. And I don't know. Cool I think that's, it. that's an admission of guilt there. What you broke. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I only broke a couple of things. I, I try not to break things too often. But every now and again, I just have to. Like people's spirits when I Telesto them. I mean, yeah. Bungie said, hey, don't use Telesto. And what did he use in Trials? What did he admit to using in Trials? Yep, exactly. Telesto. Or, I really did. I oh. took it in because there were people standing next to each other. And I'm like, oh, oh, sir, so don't do that. That's a stupid idea. Since I didn't have an ice wall to throw at him, I had to use Telesto. Why don't you have an ice wall? Because I'm a striker titan. At least I was this weekend. Oh. Or I may have been a warlock so at the time. Chose not to have to say, an ice wall. I, I was arc something. I, I probably had an arc buddy at the time because I think the arc buddy got more kills than I ever will in Trials. I if told y'all that our buddy is OP, man. I told y'all. That thing hit uh, so hard in PvP. Yeah, I know. I've been running it for weeks. I ran it with Andy and whoever else we played with a couple weeks back. Yeah, our buddy's yeah, wonderful. I, was, I wasn't talking to you specifically because freaking AZ is all like, they're not OP. I'm like, you're freaking high. Hell yeah, they are. You know, so if you if you have three people standing in, a, in an arc buddy well, none of them have to fire a shot and they'll kill the opponent. It's, with it's, the stack on? Stupid OP. Yeah. Bring the stack. Yeah. The stack is your friend. It's crazy. It's yeah. not OP. Man, you high. Get out of here easy. And there's Sorry. some movies of the week. Uh, a Marvel Marvel theme, Destiny 2. And the Blair Witch Queen. Yep. And some cool art. Some some nice... I like the uh, Taken like Guardians. That's pretty cool. That it reminds me of the Destiny 1 set that we had, where you were kind of half glowing. Yeah, is that Destiny One or was that two. Destiny Two? I can't I think remember. Think it was now. D One, but I've yeah. It feels long enough ago to be D One, but time is a construct. Yeah. So we were making jokes the other day. You know how next season we're gonna have um, Hive Guardians, right? We were just thinking to ourselves, yeah, we saw the ones with the throwing knives. We saw the ones with this and that and the other. The thing that's gonna terrify me is when you have a Hive Guardian. I don't know, Screed that's shoulder charging at your ass. You know what I'm saying? It's like that seems very self destructive. Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of his whole thing, you know? But yeah, just in a shoulder charging freaking anything is terrifying, much less a freaking hive. Respawn. Screeb. Yeah. Well, I know, I know, you know what's going to cheer you up for next week? Nothing. Saladin will be returning to host the Iron Banner. Why does that cheer me up? Because it makes Cause... me happy. And it'll make uh... me happy. I don't think that's how that works. I'm not married to you. I mean, anyway, you should, also take, you should also take this time to uh, catch up on some catalysts, knock out some triumphs, or mm -hmm. finish anything else that's taking up space in your quest log, because uh, they have some fun stuff planned for the 30th anniversary that drops on December 7th. So, uh, yeah, now's a good time to finish some things, because they're going to give you more things to do, because there wouldn't be a looter shooter without the loot and the shoot. And lots of quests. Mm hmm. How many quests? And that's what Cosmo has for us this week. Yeah. And now do we have we have a roundup? Feedback? 
We have something. We, we do. The respawn is over to you to your respawn's report roundup. So he alt tabs out of his game and gets baboon torpent. I do not have to alt tab out of the game. I can do this and I can do that. The game is still running. Um. DMG says, Twab's live. Details for what we've learned from the trials over the last few weeks. Info, upcoming changes to matchmaking. Remember, we are in a transformative period. Any change that we introduce isn't locked in forever. Give it a try and sound off with feedback. Uh, DMG also says, this will be for the first Widow's Court weekend in a long while. I think it's the first time we've been featured since Three Peaking was removed. Uh, we'll... We'll be watching feedback on how the map plays, what's working, what's rough, does this mix up weapon usage, lots to learn. You don't have to take a drink, he's letting you know what's going to happen. Um, CM, horrible. Worst map in the game, and it's there all weekend. I was excited to play Trials 2. Looked like my seven week flawless streak is coming to an end. DMG says, break it down. Why do you consider it the worst map in the game? Are there any things you think that could be done to address the pain points? That is probably the smartest thing DMG has ever said. Oh, it's bad? Tell us why. It's, it's literally his job. He says it all the time. But that's that's one thing I hadn't thought about with the three peaking, because again, never played Trials enough for it to be a thing. But that is absolutely a map where you've got one team at the top of the stairs, one team at the bottom of the stairs near the church, Yeah. where I could see where they just three peek at each other until somebody makes a move and gets sniped. Like at least yeah. now, if, if you're peeking, you're going to take headshots. And man, I've never seen so many Mida multi tools as I saw wow. this weekend. Mida, huh? Uh, Liana Rupert yeah. says So, I've been spending a lot of time today looking at smaller content creators in Destiny 2 community. And holy balls, you guys are so talented. Your follower account is not your worth. So please drop some of your favorite Destiny content creators below, regardless of their size. Um, this, is a, this is a shout out to our community. Get on that, mm. right? Somebody from is, somebody from Bungie is actually looking at the smaller content creators. Pretty and much. unfortunately, we, we now fall into that. So yeah. we have we have feedback too. We have yeah. Zach. Um, oh, you're going to go straight into feedback, are you? Okay. Yeah, why not? I'm here, so so I can get back to the game. <laughs> we're, hey guys, we're taking, my name we're is Zach. Time away from him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, no, not really. Um, your podcast has helped me pass countless hours of work while keeping me caught up in all things Destiny. Just wanted to say thank you guys and keep it up. I'm also somewhat of a musician. I'm a vocalist of a local melodic hardcore band named Elsewhere. There's a shout out. But I also compose some keyboard music. I thought you guys might be interested in some Destiny inspired music to use as an intro or outro or whatever you want. First of all, for the podcast... I would say absolutely yes, but you got to ask Demon. But outside the podcast, I know a Twitch guy who has the same name as me that could really use music for the Twitch intro outros and all that other stuff. So at the very least, same that. name as you. Do, yeah. Does he live where you live? Absolutely. He oh. even married the same woman. Um, well, I'll, I'll share the music that came in on the email. Nice. Um, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would like some custom because right now we have the just something that's not licensed, right? Something that we could get away with. But if we could actually get something custom specifically for our show, I think that would be awesome. I could so. customize the intro. He, he, did, he you? did, but, yeah. but yeah. I mean, really, at, at this point, we're, we're what 145 episodes in. Why aren't people writing songs about us? I mean, why, why don't we have our own theme song I mean... written by somebody else? I mean, I feel like we've been doing this long enough. I he's, mean, I mean, he's we... offering to do exactly that. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, don't just offer; just do, and we will we will accept gladly. I mean, we do have you know, Respawn's original jam, praising you as our Lord and Savior, nineteen. Yep. I mean, that truly is the original jam. But I feel like we need some fresh new material. Yeah. Oh, and Demon. Um, so somebody came up with a website. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say what the website is, but I was like, you know what? That's a great idea. And then <laughs> no, I didn't know. But Parody was in the chat, and Parody's all like, you know what? I'm gonna go get it right now, and I'm gonna post a video of. Uh, Lord, uh, you know what he just said. I'm not yeah, going to repeat mm -hmm. it because I'm not going to fall into that trap. The response. But, is. <laughs> um, let's see. I skipped some stuff. Uh, some Destiny inspired music is an intro outro. Absolutely. If you like it, it's all yours. I just wanted a small way to give back to you guys for all the banter and info that has helped me pass the time. 
I also wanted to mention, I know Respawn gets all the love because he deserves it, and you're my favorite. The only thing that you need to work on is your love for Iron Banner. After hearing you endorse it, I mean, uh, I decided to jump in and try it. It was dreadful. Then again, I'm dreadful at PvP. Uh, no need to go back and reread that. Question for the show, what is one weapon? <laughs> It, it, it's unimportant that he says, but Night Demon, you're my favorite. That, that, that's definitely not part of this. <coughs> no, no, it's obviously he knows a what typo. He it doesn't matter. It's obviously a typo, right? And then he goes on to say, um, you need to work on your love for Iron Banner, talking to Night Demon. After hearing you endorse it so many times, I decided to jump in and try it, but it was dreadful. But I'm just going to be Question for the show. You need to find a buddy. Find a buddy in the game and follow them round. Mm -hmm. Once you get a bit more confident in actually going in for 1v1s, then do the 1v1s, but stick with a buddy. Anybody, it doesn't, they don't even have to be the best player. You could just use them as a human shield. Exactly. Trust me, it works, it's, it's good fun. Pick a friend, follow them and team shoot. And if they die and there's more than one of them that's attacking you, run, run like hell. Run to mm -hmm. wherever your team is and then you charge back at them hand solo style with all your friends. Mm -hmm. Even then, you find can still new, die. It's good fun. Yeah, yeah. J just find a friend, find a buddy, find a new buddy. If that buddy dies, get a new buddy. Buddies are replaceable. This is not a lifetime commitment. Yeah. Wow. And you're married? Holy crap! <laughs> yeah. But yes, to no one in question. destiny. Yeah, he has got a question for the show. Go on then. Yep. Question. All right. Question for the show. Let me bring it back. Up. Question for the show. What is one weapon that is not considered part of the meta, but will always have a special place in your guardian's heart and vault? For me. It was an arctic haze with Killing Wind and Vorpal. It was my go-to gun returning to Destiny, and I was surprised when I started to play, pay more attention to the meta that it was not listed closer to the top of the autos. How about you guys? You guys go first. Mine is the Scorpion SR4, which is exactly the same as the contingency plan that is available that you can get this season. And I do have a video from Cool Guy in our show notes this week going over why you must get one of these vice rapid fire scout rifles they are amazing and the scorpion was the original it was the og one you can't get it at the moment until they kind of bring it back into the rotation but the contingency plan is exactly the same with different roles but it's a vice rapid fire frame you can get some i think really it even had like very it. similar stats to it too didn't it oh yeah i mean there was a contingency like it's very comparable plan. Which was the dead orbit version you had mm -hmm. the scorpion which was the standard you know one that dropped from everything and then you had the iron banner one which was the uh oh, i can't remember now um oh my god my my, my my brain's fried something something vex wasn't it frost myers that was it was the frost myers hex um so yeah those ones are out of the rotation but yeah, the, those those weapons were amazing as scout rifles go. Just, I didn't think I'd say that. I always used to like kind of the high, fast firing pulse rifles like the Grasp of Malak from Destiny One. That will I will always hold that one from Destiny One in my heart. I love that. Uh, although you can get you know, Darkest Before, which is the newest one, a reissued one from the Trials of, not Trials. Yeah, it was Trials of the Nine. Now it's in the dungeon. But yeah. So, Vice Rapid Fire Frames, Contingency Plan, Scorpion. I will go with, uh, I will go with not the Gnawing Hunger, because I've talked about it in Summoner's Praises enough, but I have a Summoner that I got from like the week that the Summoner was available with Rangefinder, Zen Moment, Lightweight Mag, and Extended Barrel that I just really enjoy. I just enjoy the range of it. I enjoy the feel of it. I like the way it works. That's just one of my favorites. And just my uh, shout out to my Bicons that has been Sunset and sadly is no longer a thing, but I had a beautiful full auto bygones that I used pretty much exclusively for like two years. It was great. Very nice. Um, when I was thinking about this question, I was thinking exotics, but everybody here has mentioned legendaries, so now I'm a little off guard. Go, go exotics. Um, you can go well, exotic. I mean, exotic go obviously juju. is going to be the bad juju. Yeah. yeah. Or the Zalo <laughs> Supercell, which you guys don't know of, but oh my god. That was such a fun yeah. game. Imagine an auto rifle with lightning. And it chained lightning to other nearby enemies so that you could kill just groups of ads at once. Oh my god! And this is this is an auto rifle, not a machine gun. It's just an auto rifle. It was like the Thunderlord's little brother, and I loved it. It was so awesome. It was a little janky, meaning there was a lot of kickback to it. It's basically an AK-47 that shot lightning out of it, and it was it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. But you know, sticking with legendaries, I I gotta say, man. 
either the mountaintop that up or the uh the randy's throwing knife the randy's throwing knife was really really good back randy's when it was, was around really good yeah there's still a special place actually... in my heart for the vigil and swing too i really enjoy the vigil especially on my warlock i can't i can't explain to you why i feel like that weapon needs to be in the hands of my warlock but it just i feel like it works better there i don't know what it is but if it's a warlock it needs a vigilance wing that's just that's just how it is i hear you you don't want to get out of it all right and um hopefully they don't die uh again thanks so much guys xbox gamer tag i'm not gonna say it out loud in case you don't want a whole bunch of people um i should probably get it off the screen then um <laughs> Say it out loud, because, you know, if you make respawn... I mean, it's too late. Yeah, it was already on the screen. So, Ariel Avail, um, if you guys ever want to chat, it's always surprises me when some of you mention that you haven't done Deepstone Crypt that much. Uh, I can teach you guys easily. Feel free to use music whenever that, you see that's fit. Me and parody, probably, Deepstone. Yeah, there's definitely you. I've done it, uh, according to uh, Raid Report, like, 59 times. Nowhere near as much as other people, but I've definitely been through it a few times. Um, I can also modify it if you want, uh, shorter or certain parts different, just let me know. Or just trash it. Uh, all good, haha. -ha. I attached a picture just so you guys can see all the MIDI that's going on. Also, if you ever need a hardcore track to use, I could hook you up with an Elsewhere song to use without worrying about copyright and all that. Keep up the great show, guys. All the best. I attached a YouTube link to the band. Bam. There we go. And I'll, very, I'll stick the link very cool to his band in our show notes. So if you want to check out his band on YouTube, it'll be in our show notes this week. Absolutely. I feel like we, we do need a hardcore track of Respawn. You could even just, I'm sure Night Human could even get you some of Respawn's tracks from the last two weeks screaming about uh, show, um, Titans and Shatter Dive. I feel like there, there's a track to be made there. I mean, there's, there's so much angry material. Just set that to a beat. You're all set. Yeah. <laughs> These reviews are amazing. I love them. I love them so much. I think we already saw this when my cat yells at my phone when I listen to the podcast. Especially when Demon talks. He likes not arf. I love this podcast. Keep making it. Thank you for mentioning my review. Um, this is from Drum Raider. Uh, no, I think he, he did a review. Or he sent us an email saying he couldn't do a review. And he uh, said about the cat yelling at the phone. And mm -hmm. we asked, is it just me or is it not arf as well? But apparently he likes not arf. Uh, oh, yeah. wow, look at that. So it's just you his cat doesn't care for. Um, I think Women this is actually him. Night Demon. Night Demon created a fake account. It says, awesome, no-nonsense T2 podcast. Either that or he's not listening to us. No nonsense. Ha! Ah! There's <laughs> an awful high quantity of nonsense. There is Are you actually so listening? nonsense, right? I, I mean, um, it, it was it was left on the 10th of October, so it was, it was pre-three hours of screaming about Shutter Dive, so... Mm. That may have been where he saw the new nonsense. It's hard to oh, say. Oh, no, dude. We've got 145 episodes of nonsense. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, he says, awesome, informative, no-nonsense podcast that keeps things simple for casual players, but also touches on all sorts of subjects that more experienced players will find interesting. Give it a shot, and you won't be disappointed. Hashtag Hunter Master Race. Um, warlock. Warlock Master There is no such thing as a Warlock Master Race. Y'all heard Hunter Master Race, and now you're trying to jump on the bad wagon. It doesn't exist. The, the only the master arc, race the there buddy, is is the, the hunter master race. The arc buddy is he's got his own race. All right, he's his own thing. Warlocks aside, he's sentient too. <laughs> Leave him alone. In Destiny Three, I would like to play an arc buddy with a Telesto. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just what's his face that we're always chasing after? Rolling, just rolling with a Telesto. Um, this is from Brian Mitchell. Good afternoon. Let me start off by saying I have been listening to the podcast for a few months now, and I'm an avid, avid fan of the show. You guys have helped me through many boring work days. I love listening to you three rant about random Destiny topics and lore. When a new show comes out, I can't help but listen intently. Moving to my next point, I think it would be interesting to hear your thoughts in, on emblems and shaders. More specifically, if Bungie were to make it so the community could create their own shaders and emblems and submit them... To where the devs would be able to judge and actually implement them in the destiny i think it's really creative idea and can see some really cool shaders and emblems being brought out of this it's my personal opinion and i want them to be available to all players so maybe making them available via glimmer or bright dust like the ones that are already in game i'm not quite sure if this is or currently a thing um like i already said i would love to hear you guys' point of view 
Um, that sounds a lot like the like what they have in Call of Duty, where you can create your own emblem. That's a yeah. thing in other games. Yeah, I've, I've seen, seen that. Before. I've seen that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as that goes, I mean, yeah, I would love to create emblems since they don't really have any that have dragons in them. But you know, whatever, fine. I'm not salty about that. What about you guys? I just want to wait to like delete or sort through the fifteen thousand pages of shaders and emblems that I have, mm -hmm. so I can find like the six that I'm interested in. I think Brian brings up a really good point. I think oh. they should do like a community like competition where people design emblems for the game and mm -hmm. whoever kind of wins maybe there's about five different winners and they stick them in the eververse and you can only purchase them via silver and some of the profits goes to bungie some of the profits goes to uh the bungie foundation and the, the creator actually gets a little bit of the profit as well i think that would be a really good way to actually give that back would to be the nice. community absolutely but the community has to vote for it i don't want bungie picking it because oh yeah no no that's what i'm saying is. But Why I think it, it, it? it should be something, <laughs> you know, that, that spread, ac spread across the, the three different things. Or that artist gets featured. Something to give back to the artist for actually designing that thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. some, some actual money goes toward the artist, not just, hey, you did a cool thing, but like some money your way. But yeah, I, I love the split between, you know, Bungie Artists and Bungie Foundation or, you know, yeah, tied to a tied to the St. Jude thing every year. Yeah, tied to a charity event of some sort. That's a great idea. Right. There, there's a lot of shaders in this game, and a lot of them look the same or just look terrible. Right. P.S. I love the lore segments that are random throughout the episodes. I've recently gone into the lore, and this just makes me want to dive deeper in it. There you go. Brian, we'd just, just like to underline the fact the reason why they're so random is because we have a random lore scribe that randomly shows up or turns up whenever mm -hmm. he feels like it. Yeah. Not calling not you out at all, off here. <laughs> Oh, I'm definitely calling him out. Stop no, being you're, you're, you. You're not talking about Arf. Not Arf. Not Arf, no. Not Arf, mm -mm, no. no. Somebody else, it's not no, Arf. Arf. So Drew, with a Mr. Hanky symbol, uh, picture, whatever, very cool. Um, <laughs> Misenax must be part Russian, redneck, and lead the federal, and the lead federal agent from Monster State. So first of all... <laughs> I think he's commenting on your very yeah, lovely I know what he's, law reading. I know what he's no, commenting but, on. But other people don't know what he's talking about. But, uh, Respawn see, did a, about a, it is... I think it was about three weeks ago now. Respawn did a lovely law reading where Mithrax was part Russian, redneck, and <clears throat> federal agent for Monster Inc. So very uh, gruff, very uh, redneck. I, I think that's accurate. Russian. I mean, I think I think yeah. you hit the nail on the head. Oh, it, so, it, was, it was beautiful and wonderful and perfect in, in every way. In my defense, I told them multiple times... I don't want to do the missing. Uh, sir, you, you don't need to be. You don't need to defend. Everyone loved it. <laughs> none, of, none of the feedback we've gotten, except for maybe the guy who almost ran, has been negative. I would say, and really, he didn't run his van off the road. So even that's a positive. Point is, is I didn't want to do the missing. <laughs> All right, y'all keep bringing it up. I know you, you're doing it as a point of contention. You're making it look like a compliment. I know it's happening, but really, you just you're poking the bear, and I see this. And you guys have been no, listening no, to it, Demon it is a and parody it's too amazing. much. And y'all need to stop. Um, <laughs> but I also have for you guys. This is um, somebody that came into our chat the other day. Which guys? Right? Which guys? Us guys? Uh, Us guys? You two. Titans guys. Titans guys. Oh, okay. Right? The person came into the chat the other day. Um, their name is Hio. Uh, I say they because they're transitioning. So I'm not quite sure how to gender this individual. Um, but their name is Hio. Um... Allow me to start with a story. Private match with my friends, my buddy, on mid-tree Sunbreaker, Titan with fusion nades and the exotic arm piece that makes them explode an impact. He shoots me once with a chappy for the 100 damage to break my shield and then tosses a hammer at me, killing me. He can now one shot with the hammer. He proceeds to one shot another with the hammer. Now he has whirling flames times two. One more hammer throw and he's up to three and the mayhem begins. He's using double ashes to assets, throwing sticky nades that explode on impact that also do enough damage to kill with a slight overshield. The recharge rate is buffed for the nades from the roaring flames, unless I'm forgetting something, and the gauntlets may help as well. The man died 5 times in the entire 50 kill game with a 10 KD and using no less than 5 supers. It was probably more. It's a specific build, yes, but damn, that was effective. Ashen Wake was the exotic. By the way, 
this was before the mid tree buff, right? Um, I was like, yeah, I know that build. I've seen it. Um, that's all I remember from that build. However, it may be mid tree striker Titan paired with Syntheseps. Three people on his own. If they were within range, they die. He covered this. What you failed to cover was how the charge melee does knock back. But if you press the melee button fast enough, you lunge through the third dimension to kill them anyway because I'm a titan. Sorry, that just brought back some good memory. Um, he also says it makes it impossible to kill you during the melee lunge, meaning the titan, I guess, is invincible during that melee lunge. Uh, da -da -da. And for my friend, the one final one that I remember for right now, may I present to you Heart of Innermost Light. Using any ability overpowers your other abilities. So if you pop a barricade, your lightning grenades, your sticky grenades, they all one shot. Shoulder charging Void Titan who also can throw one shot sticky grenades and suppress you if you're too close to the impact zone. The impact zone of the shield bash. He goes on to say with one exotic, a single Titan has three one shot abilities. And if you hot swap over to Doomfangs, it's near infinite supers and sixes. Titans are so fun in PvP for no reason. By the way, this guy is, and I quote, a hunter slash titan main. That's not a thing. Don't emulate this person. Um, honestly, I think at this point, uh, just bringing up Heart of Innermost Light, if they don't laugh, they haven't watched enough Kami Cakes. I learned a lot from him, not JK, but it's true that I did learn a lot from Kami. Because it's such an underrated exotic for being so broken that it's almost comical. By the way, if you do end up mentioning me, the name is pronounced Hio, like it's Japanese or some S like that. Um, so there you go, Hio. There's your stories. I have let the two Titans know what you wanted them to know. Um, and yeah, he just wanted to build on what we were talking about last time. Although I was very specifically talking about the melees, because when we start going into other abilities, it gets very, very chaotic. And yeah, Titans do have a lot of stuff at their disposal. But my main complaint is the melee. So... Your story has been heard. There you go, Mr. Hunter slash Titan main. And uh, do you guys have any opinions on what he has said? No, I, I think it's a really good thing for you to break down all the Titan melees and how they can build out to them. Yep. Yeah. Like, good. By the way, this is not, this is not I, an instruction manual. He is well, no, not I thought that's what you were how... doing. No, that's no, why no, I appreciate I, it. I, you know, I mean, it sounds like this is how to give Hunters PTSD. I just, I, I do wonder though, I mean, one, you said it was a private match, and just I just wonder how good was his friend to begin with. I'm like, yeah, he obviously specced into a into a completely, you know, super sticky build, but yeah. you're in a private match, I'm guessing, with three of you, isn't it? It sounded like there were three people in it. So, yeah, if there's three of you in a private match with one person uh, has a build going and the other two don't, and I'm going to guess he was at least a reasonably good PvP player. So I'm not entirely surprised. But, but no, yeah, I, like, I, th I think the whole, the whole point of that was he was... He was demonstrating how easy it is to get that snowball rolling. He just got shot with a scout rifle one time and then finished off with the hammer and then that dude was on a roll. You know? Well, right. With 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 three people, absolutely. I agree with you. Right. Like if you're if you're doing that in trials, sure. If you're doing it in, in survival, sure. If you're doing it in sixes, no way. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. If you have limited people and you can keep track of everyone on the other team, you can get that snowball rolling and roll with that snowball as long as you can. But if you're playing, rolling. if you're playing six, sixes, balls. like you may have some success, but you know you're probably not going to keep that snowball rolling because there's too many things to keep track of. Yeah, like at no point did anyone ever say like the Titan doesn't have a bunch of melees and way to make these things happen. Like it, neither yeah. one of us have ever really made that argument. Like mm -hmm. we agree, if you can hear no, Titan, you, he's you gonna, he's gonna punch you and kill you. Yeah, like, no you, one has you ever just kind of this. say things like, like, oh, it's hard to land or whatever, right? To be fair. But land. most of the complaints come from other Titans I, that are outside the show that are telling me that I'm wrong about what I'm saying, and Titans can't actually one-shot. Well, I've these got a little bit of a song before you respawn. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to actually hear who these people... Because you keep saying people are saying all these people. Who are they? Who are Dude, they're people? in the chats. They're in our chats. Right. You can read them. Guys in the chat and respawn yourself. This is something you could do live on stream right now. I want you to go to YouTube and I want you to type in Shoulder Charge Destiny 2. And I want you to tell me how many videos have been featured this week with people saying that Titan Shoulder Charge is OP. How many videos come up this week? How many of them say a year ago, two years ago? 
six months One ago. Year, three years, six years, three years. Well, mm. Let me guess. All of the ones that are going to say... Your point is getting to all the videos talking about uh, Shatter Dive being OP, right? That's the point you're getting at, even I'm, though it's not OP. I'm just showing you something. Because I've done a little bit of research this week going on the two conversations. So I call them conversations. They weren't realistic conversations for the last two weeks. But going on the two conversations that you had towards me regarding shoulder charge and Titans being OP and Hunters not needing a Shatter Dive nerf. You actually have to go into filters and you have to specifically look for this week or this month to see what people are saying about Shatter Dive, uh, sorry, shoulder charge. To Ooh. just see that, you know, somebody's even said shoulder charge is literally garbage in one of their videos. Shoulder charge range is weird. Uh, shoulder charge is balanced, I guess. I guess. You can absolutely whiff through. I made a video and posted it in the Discord this week of my well, trials you can whiff, last you week. Can whiff, you, you can, can whiff absolutely run. Knife. You can whiff a shatter dive. That's right. Anything. Well, yeah. Well, that's our point. You can whiff anything. Like, like you act like shoulder charge is a one hit kill at all times and is raining terror across if the entire universe. If you land universe. it, it is is the point well, that I'm right. making. And it's all RNG. It's it's all you might land it. You might r run right past that guy through the doorway. It's all random, like everything else in this game. Yeah. No, I I never said. Well, I might have said it, but the point I was making is when it lands, because you guys are bringing up whiffing. Well, hell, you can whiff a throwing knife, you can whiff a shatter knife, you can whiff a, a whatever, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you can whiff your stuff too. But for the things that connect and land, and how easy they are to connect and land, the one shots versus the not one shots kind of thing. Anyway, that was it. So, I mean, in, in the end, is it going to happen anyway? Yeah. And, you know, the next thing that the hunters find that, you know, we can use in lieu of Shatter Dive, is that going to get absolutely nerfed next? Yes. This is just the life of the hunter, because there's so many of us, no matter what we use, because it's the default go-to, that's the thing that's going to be nerfed next. And it's just how we live. The problem or, is, when, or, or when you see people posting videos of Shatter Dive online, and one Shatter Dive takes out two supers it's a little bit op surely there Why? should be some damage mitigation from a grenade and being shot okay. dove. So what? make it so it doesn't kill a super dude a well-placed sniper rifle can kill a super what's the problem that's a very different thing than a shatter dive and a well-placed sniper one takes skill one takes half luck yeah and Look, I'm, I'm just I'm, saying i'm so tired of this conversation so i i'm done with it and I'm I wasn't even saying, here for half of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you look at the other side of the coin and type in Shatter Dive Destiny 2, there are a lot more videos having a uh, counter-argument. I knew you were getting to that. Having That's a counter-argument to what you put out for the last couple of weeks. I'm not even going to mm -hmm. say it because it's nothing to do with me. I, I'm not even on the board of directors for Destiny. So I'll Wait, let huh? the numbers, I'll let the community decide whether they like it or not, what's going to happen with mm -hmm. Shatter Dive. Anyway, well, the community is on. Already I, will, decided. I will send you the secret invite to the to the Titan only board of Bungie after this night. Even sorry, oh. you, you must yours must have gotten lost in the mail somehow. Oh, okay, uh... thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll get them Shattered Dive's <laughs> nurse as soon as possible. Uh, I'm, 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 honestly, I'm just waiting. For, I'm just waiting for to come back, and then they make the Hunter class amazing at Void, and people will be like, "What was Revenant Hunter?" That was a thing we used to play? No, that's not a thing anymore. Well, I still like Revenant Hunter because now. you can get tough, dude. Like, you can... Like, it's... That that has my highest resilience. Because you, can, you can just freeze and slow people at the drop of a hat. I'm talking uh, resilience, I, dude. Resilience. You don't need resilience if you, the other team can't move. Just so, you, just so you know, though, I don't actually use Shatter Knight. Anyway, tips, tricks, guys, and builds this week. Time Sausage Gaming has going above and beyond for you people that are new to Destiny or people that have kind of missed out on things that are going away in the Destiny content vault. Um, I spoke a couple of weeks ago about him putting a guide to get the Cade Sparrow, the Gambler's Palm, and Secret Treasure Emblem. He's now gone and had a look at six other emblems that are going into the DCV in the next couple of months. Also with a link to a really cool website. Now this is one that we've never seen before. I've never kind of heard before. It's called the Destiny Emblem Collector. So if you type that into Google, that will take you to a website that literally you can have a look at and it will filter down. And it says 
recently added entering into the DCV or emblems that are in the DCV at the moment. So you can actually select and have a look at when these actual emblems are going away. And on the front page, it says time limited emblems currently available in the, and it tells you when they're actually going away as well, which are really cool. Um, so again, don't forget the bump in the night from the um, Festival of the Lost that is going to go away on this Tuesday's reset. So this is the one where you have to link your Bungie.net account to the Bungie store account. And then you can, it's basically a free thing from going and linking those accounts and um, clicking on redeem reward. Yeah, you have to go to the emblem. checkout, which is really weird. And it says you don't need to pay. But anyway, yeah, destinyemblemcollectors.com. And he goes over the six emblems that are available at the moment that are going into the Destiny content vault. So I thought that was really cool. I'll stick that in my Tangled Chore guides for the next couple of months. And then Zombie Ben, or one word, has all sparrows to collect before the Witch Queen. Another cool guide of looking at some of the sparrows that might be going away. Meh Poodle has the Titan Anti Shatter Dive Stasis PvP Say that again? build. Meh Poodle. Meh. Well done. You know, as in meh. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just wanted to hear you say it again. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Has the Titan Anti Shatter Dive Stasis PvP build. So this is countering those Shatter Dive hunters that are terrorizing the Crucible at this point in time. And Fallout Plays has a video that he doesn't want you to watch. So that's it. I'm just going to tell you, don't watch the video, but it'll be linked in the show notes. But don't watch uh, it. Don't watch it. Cheese Forever has a, a linked a couple of his videos, as I've said, about the Telesto glitches. Um, cool Guy, as I mentioned earlier, has a guide on the Meta Breaker, as he calls it, the Contingency Plan Scout Rifle. This is the one, the Vice ones that are rapid fire. They are really, really good. And check out the video if you want to have a look at what roles are available and what he recommends. Continuing with our solo legendary Shattered Realm guides, we have Ibontis going over the final one, which is the Forest of Echoes for this week. So don't forget, they are on a three-week rotation. So the first week's one will come up next week at reset. So I'll link all of those in our show notes, those three Ibontis ones, or just check out Ibontis' channel. He's got the solo legendary versions for you. Uh, TDT have put out a couple of cool videos this week. Now, you know these ones, they go off and take like different builds from the community they suggest doing there are five, two videos that do five builds each for pvp one of them is titled the jotun warlock and the other one is titled the peacekeeper huckleberry titan in one of the videos i can't remember which one they had a community challenge where they had to crouch walk like a crab and walk around punching each other in a crucible match just go and watch the videos. They are really, really good fun. And they rate the, the builds that the community put together. And as I said, I mean, the Jotun Warlock one is with the um, Dawn Chorus. So he's pairing the Jotun with the Dawn Chorus to get the extra burn ticks. That's a really cool build. And then he really slays out with the peace Peacekeepers and the Huckleberry uh, submachine gun build for the Titan. And he wasn't happy with the one video that he kind of got out there because he said he was going against a stick stack, I think. So he went off and played again solo, and oh my god, this man puts in some work with the, the Huckleberry. So check those two videos out. Now, have you guys ever wondered, is No Time to Explain better than The Messenger? Is he using the exotic pants that refill your submachine gun? Yes, the Peacekeepers, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I came up with that build a long-ass time ago when me and Peace were running PvP together. Two submachine guns with those you, pants, Huckleberry being made, the primary. He didn't make a video. He didn't make a video. No, we didn't make a video. If but he didn't make a video. Then, yeah, then we, we had that as our primary, and then we, our secondary listen, there was think... the the voice submachine gun that got sunset. Uh, Reclips. Yes, that was our secondary. I think, and it was so a deadly. lot of people have put builds together with the peacekeepers and like Huckleberries and Terrobas and things like that. But this is one that is featured in T TDT's builds. Fine, whatever. So yeah. I've been there, you, done that. You make a video, he'll talk about yours too. I will. I will. But going back to what Castle Content has put out, are you mm. interested in to know which is better? No time to explain the exotic pulse rifle or the messenger, the pulse rifle that you can get from Trials? Absolutely. Well, I go, am. go and watch like, his video. Well, just tell me. No. That's what just his video is there to tell you. Is it Deacon approved? I guess so. Is anything Deacon approved when it not comes really, to Destiny no. 2? Oh, this next video is definitely not Deacon approved. Patagates Gaming did like a whole series a while back. It must have been about two or three months back where he took like one of his friends, like a content creator or somebody that's really good at PvP and sat down and did a, a, a long form interview of how they play in the Crucible and and 
tactics they use. He's done another one with his friend Cool Cheese, and this is uh, how to dominate in PvP with an SMG. 46 minutes long, I think it was 46. It's 40 something minutes long, so definitely not Deacon approved. But again, it's it pairs really nicely with the Huckleberry or the Taraba. If you're going to use an SMG, go and listen to what this man says. Pearls of wisdom. And this week's Nightfall tips. So I know this week's will be out of the rotation by the time Tuesday comes around, but I will put them in the previous Nightfall tips so that when you can select the GMs, when you get to that power level, all the tips will be in there. But I have Sneaky Beaver's G GM Corrupted Boss Insta-Kill Strategy, Fallout Plays Grandmaster Corrupted Nightfall Guide with Cheese, and the above Grandmaster Corrupted Nightfall Guide. And Parody and I can attest, we did use some of the tactics uh, what, that I remembered from watching these videos I was saying to Parody let's stand here and do this do this do that and it worked out on on nightfall we didn't do a GM because some of us weren't up to power we won't call those some people us, out some, some slackers some some, some titans slackers. playing as our warlock to use our arc buddies who <laughs> yeah. who aren't up to power yet mm -hmm. yeah some people yeah. have more time to play than others all right sir some people don't have nine children to pawn off your responsibilities for destiny about yeah Somebody's got to do my gambit farming. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You you pawn off the workload, and not In everybody fact, can do that. Uh, I need to check. It's not pawning off; it's distributed. I need it's, to check with Phoenix to make workload. sure that he's he's reset my rank on my strikes. Hang on a second. <laughs> I'll be back. No. Right. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, there's the tips, tricks, guides, and builds for this week. Dun, da, da, da. So, if you do want to get in contact with us and tell us how we're doing good, how we're doing bad, how Respawn is wrong about Shattered Dive, how I'm wrong Not about Shoulder Charge, and Not you can email the show at two titans and a hunter at hotmail.com. That's all one word. Uh, you can get in touch with us on Twitter, but I'm guessing it's going to be a long form rant or email. We are on Instagram and Facebook as well, so you can kind of contact us on there. If you have a clan you want us to shout out, if you a uh, newly formed clan, like not off. So I half expected that this week, not off. You to get in touch with me and say, this is my new clan. This is what I've put together, but he hasn't. So I'm not going to shout out his clan. I won't do it. Can't we'll shout me. out his clan. But nope. if you have a clan that you want to kind of spotlight and get people involved and joining, get in contact with us and we will clan spotlight you. Um, if you want to join our Discord, it's frozen.party and that's frozen with a zero... Is that right, Parody? I think it's Discord.Frozen.Party. I really should double check on which which one that takes you to. <laughs> it's either... It's really, I mean, the, the the clan and the podcast Discord are really one of the same at this point. It's, it's a one piece. But you can ask us questions there. You can get in contact with us there and send us private messages and ask us questions. Or, you know, yeah. Go on the Respawn so, Army. Tell us we're like wrong. Like tell us you're right. Feed, respawn Diego. He, he he needs he needs the the picking up after all this. I need stuff at, 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 And at the hands at the hands of 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 Titans, just you know, <laughs> reaming him in the crucible. He needs he needs someone to pick him up and dust him off. I mean, if you have any good websites, any good videos that we should be highlighting for people to see, send those as well. I'm quite open to have a look at other people's suggestions. I did sit down uh, earlier this week and said, you know, I've, I've, I've been listening to all these people talk about their, their lovely shatter diving and their lovely hunters. And I was like, you know, I'd like one of those. I, I'd like to at least just play with it. Just, just see how it, you know, see how it works, see how it does, see if I can, you know, be any decent at it going to trials and become a 10 tier, 10 X tier, you know, flawless trials God with shatter dive alone, just to tell, tell uh, respawn he's wrong. So I loaded up my hunter. And I was like, Oh, I haven't done beyond light. I haven't even unlocked the stasis subclass on this hunter. So I said, okay. I remember them saying they shortened the path, they made this easier, you know, because I remember doing it on the Titan originally and then the Warlocks over the course of a couple months, just you know, bit it by was bit time going. And whatnot, yeah, yeah and, and, and it was just long. It was just a long here, there, go all over here, go here, visit Shalhan for three seconds and come back. And I was like, I don't really want to put in like, weeks of effort into this stupid pursuit just to just to get this unlocked. I was like, let me start it out. Let, let me see how it goes. And over the course of about two evenings, probably between six and ten hours overall, I don't know exactly, I got the whole thing unlocked up to the Shatter Dive, and I and not quite the Dusk Field, the second grenade, but almost. So they definitely shortened it. You can just run like through boom, boom, boom. It's like, go see the crystal, unlock it, go run a mission, go see the crystal, unlock it, go back through all the lost sectors. 
what felt like a time gated, like, you know, many week, many month pursuit. Yeah. You could knock out in a weekend if you wanted to. And and literally I, I loaded my hunter and it was like, I was seeing the beyond light cutscene. Like I had done nothing. It's like, Hey, you should go pick up your thing for battlegrounds. Like you could, you could, you know, more or less come back to the game. <laughs> after, like, <laughs> after like, like, like I, I can't play battlegrounds on my hunter. Cause I never, so whatever I need to, it's like, go play these legacy missions. No, I'm not doing that. I don't care about any of that. I've done it on two characters. I'm not doing it on a third, which brings up the point of, I wish you could just sort of like do the seasonal stuff on one character and be done with it. The subclass unlocking, I understand. Like I need to do that on all three characters. Fine. But they did make it significantly shorter and significantly easier. So you could sit down over a long weekend and go from literally day one beyond light to having your stasis completely, you know, having your stasis unlocked. And because I had all the fragments, fragments, aspects, the ones that, you know, all, all the 10,000 things you can slot into stasis, I have all those unlocked from doing them previously. They were just there on my hunter waiting for me. But I still had to, you know, had to unlock Shatter Dive, have to unlock the Dustfield Grenade, have to unlock those pieces of it. So it was nice to see that they really did make that grind much lesser because it was, I was like, I'll do this. But if it's, if it's going to be like a, you know, every weekend for the next month kind of thing to unlock, I, I'm not that motivated. But they really did decrease that grind, so it makes Stasis much more attainable. And yeah, and if you do have the pieces unlocked on other characters, they're just there ready for you to use. You don't have to, you know, go and unlock those one by one by one each week or whatever. Oh, that is cool. So they did really improve that experience. So I, I haven't I've played some Gambit and run some strikes, but I haven't brought Shatter Dive into the into the Crucible to be my true hunter god yet. But I'm working on it. I'm getting there. Well, you know, I'm working on trying to get Deacon into playing Destiny so that I can do this is uh, a true introduction to destiny for new players it's not working mm -hmm. out just at this second i don't think it's i'm to be honest i don't think i'm gonna ever pull it off so i'm not gonna <laughs> just say not a second. ever of how to get into destiny at this point in time i may have a, a small child that i might be able to coerce into playing and go through the campaign and see how it plays out and see what's best to recommend but not at this point in time so uh, that's why i think luna's our best bet yeah because my, my wife looks at me and goes no I'm no, I, I, I will never play this. This is stupid. Why are you doing this? So I think respawn, I think Luna, you said she was streaming the other night. I think she's our best bet right. to have any kind of like, you know, new light player, you know, at welcome to destiny kind of experience feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Your only hope Obi-Wan. <laughs> I just, I'm still trying to get her to understand the fact that you don't have to look or move. You can do both at the same time, <laughs> you know? It's, it's just like, you do it. I'm like, if I do it, you won't learn. Just <laughs> just, just post up with an auto rifle and be like, anything that is over there, mow them no, down. That's her favorite that weapon is, is an auto rifle. Whenever I swapped her to something exactly. else that was higher light, she didn't like it. I'm yeah. like, you, you need you need higher light, wife. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, have to in, light. We, we need to infuse the auto rifle. The auto yeah, rifle I is guess. your god. Well, the I don't think she's at level. Lord. Well, there are whites and blues. She can't infuse them. Ah, uh, details, details. <laughs> kind of a big one, but yeah, no. I guess that's it from us this week. Oh, yes, that is it from us this week. I'm going to die. Well, Respawn's going to die. Night Demon's going to not get his wife to play Destiny, and I'm going to say thank you for joining us. Your Titans are parody in Night Demon. Your Hunter is no one responds in real life. Your Lord Scribe is, is not not Arf. He's not Arf. I don't know who he is, but he's not Arf. You can email the show at at hotmail.com. You can find the show on Twitter at twotitans underscore hunter. We're on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and really um, everywhere at Two Titans and a Hunter. You can find all your favorite Guardians on Xbox Live, Respawn on PC, but none of that matters anymore because we can cross-play all the things, but we can't talk to each other. Cross-play. What you should do while you're playing, and as all of our dear listeners clearly do, is listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or everywhere fine podcasts are sold. Watch the show on YouTube. We will get you through the day. We will get you through your weeks. We will fill your ears with the glorious, glorious Destiny content, all of the content, all of the time. And with that, gents, uh, say goodbye until next week. Nooses till next week. Hoorah. See you in the Iron Banner. Destiny 2 Podcast.
So one of my raid group buddies, uh, the one I've, I was playing with today, uh, Peace Pipes, y'all know him. He wants to know when all of us, you two included, are going to do a raid. Uh, Any raid where we have time. Yes. Was that it? Was that it? Respawn. No, he just wanted to know, man. Okay. It's questions and feedback, yo. Don't don't get hostile. Don't don't be a smart ass. I can be smart. One of these days. I can be brown. I can be blue. I can be violet skies. You could be violet skies. (laughs) 